Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're doing another outfit guide. And today it's going to be another fan requested guy. And it's going to be Frank Hopkins, the main character from the film Hidalgo, played by Viggo Mortensen. You know, Aragorn. Uh, this is definitely a role that I think a lot of people, uh, it flies under the radar for a lot of people. I mean, I'm not even a huge fan of the movie, uh, but it is a decent enough movie in its own right. It's just at the time there were a lot better movies coming out. But with all that in mind, uh, if you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it at least once so you know what I'm talking about. It's about a famous horse race and the main character is played by Viggo Mortensen like I said uh, and it's Frank Hopkins so we're gonna be doing that today so if at any point in the video you find yourself enjoying it uh, definitely leave a like on the video it helps the video out in the algorithm a lot and shows me that the content I'm making is appreciated and on top of that if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and you like the content please subscribe today and turn on the notification bell it'll help you stay up to date on all the content I release on a daily basis so with all that in mind let's just start it off with guns all right so uh, in the movie Frank Hopkins character is a knife and more importantly a single Colt single action army revolver and uh, he uses one that has the artillery variant so it looks exactly like the short barrel model here in the game. His has wood grips and they're a little bit more orangish red. Uh, I use the Coca Polo varnish. I think it comes decently close even though it's maybe not perfect on the iron wood grips. I think it looks decent enough especially considering you know it'll be in your hands so you don't really see the grip that much. Uh, but then for the metals it's going to be pretty standard factory looking. It's going to have black and steel for the barrel cylinder sight and trigger and then brown steel for the hammer and frame. It's going to be pretty similar to the replica look of blued steel guns with the color case hardened frame that's used in a lot of westerns. So if you've seen any of my replica videos before where I'm talking about guns from movies, this is going to be a very common look for a lot of these guns. So if you have the color case hardened material that you can use, then obviously I would use that on the frame. But if not, the brown steel comes the closest that we can come. No carvings, no engravings. Uh, and it's really the only gun that he uses significantly throughout the movie. So that is the only gun for the Frank Hopkins outfit. Let's move on to the outfit itself. All right, and so here we have his outfit in its entirety. And now obviously it's not 100% perfect because these outfits rarely are, but it's actually pretty close and I like the way that it turned out. I think it turned out really, really well. So uh, for starters, just for hair and facial hair, we did leave some stubble on because he's got stubble in the movie, at least for most of the movie. And uh, then for the hair, we just did a medium short length, kind of sandy blonde or real light brown hair color because that's the color that his hair is in the movie. It's, uh, you know, pretty undistinctive, I guess would be a great way to call it. it. It looks real, real white bread, but it's, it matches his from the movie pretty well. So let's just go through the items that I use to make up this outfit. So for the hat, I use this lighter tannish brown variant of the inkstone hat. It's not 100% perfect, but it does match his hat uh, the best, at least in my opinion, out of all the available options in online. Uh, his is slightly less I guess uniform looking it's a little bit more crumpled up and it doesn't the brim of it doesn't dip down quite so far in the front but I think this hat comes the closest to imitating his from the movie at least out of the available options in the game. Now for the neckwear I had a real hard time deciding what I was going to do he wears a red uh, either large bandana or neckerchief or something around his neck but it's tied like the day shoot scarf is here in the game so it kind of drapes down in the front and goes around the back of his neck and you know the bulk of it's around the back. Uh, his in the movie is red so I could see the argument for just using a red bandana. I almost did that, but it this one is the style of his from the movie better, even though it's a different color. So it really depends. I think the day shoot scarf looks better just because of the style, but if you want to try matching the color, then a plain red bandana is going to be your best bet, or even a red neckerchief uh, is going to be the best bet. But I think the day shoot scarf style is more important than the uh, than the color. So that's the neck bear I went with. Now for the shirt, uh, this is my only area of contention that I've got. So the row barrow shirt with the sleeves rolled up looks a lot like the shirt that he wears in the movie, uh, at least for a good chunk of the movie. The only problem I've got is for some reason recently the Row Barrow shirt is doing this weird clipping thing up on the shoulders so you can see his skin up on the shoulders. I'm not a huge fan of that. I mean the day shoot scarf helps hide some of that but not all of it. But that is the primary option I have. Now of course if you don't have the Row Barrow shirt because uh, you missed it in one of the quick drop passes, I believe it was quick drop pass 2, then obviously the shirt's not an option so we have to use a different one. Honestly the dirty white variant of the Union suit is probably the next best option. I know it's not 100% percent perfect but it matches pretty well it the style looks about right and this one has the advantage of being a little bit more skin tight so it's a bit more form-fitting like the one that he wears in the movie is so if you don't have the row barrow shirt then this one also works again with the sleeve rolled up but I think the row barrow shirt looks better then for the gun belt the light brown variant of the bandit gun belt matches his decently well now in the movie his sits much higher it's right around his waist it doesn't drop down his leg like this but it is a plain 
brown gun belt. His doesn't have bullet loops, but, you know, we can't win everything. His does have a square brass belt buckle like this. His is bigger, but this still matches the style. And it has that, like I said, the uniform lighter brown look. It matches very well. So this is the weapon equipment I went with. Then for the pants, I went with this light uh, brownish tan, almost kind of yellowish variant of the Cabrera pants. In the movie, his are slightly more subdued. They look just a little bit darker brown, but not as dark brown as a lot of the other pants options in the game. So I thought it was better to err on the side of these since they're a bit lighter. His are like a a real dark khaki or like a, a dark beige color, not actually brown. So I think these match decently well and they also match the style, like the waistline of these and the way that they're cut down the sides and the, I guess, crotch line or whatever you call that there to keep it about the same height. I think these pants match his from the movie the best. For footwear, we're going to be using the worn ropers boots and we're going to use these uh, slightly worn out brown variant and keep those tucked into the pants. They match his from the movie almost perfectly. He is just wearing a slightly more wore down plain brown cow cowboy boots in the movie so these are the best option for it and then for spurs the plain brown western rider spurs they're nice and natural looking they match the pants and boots decently well like they don't clash with anything down there and of course they uh look real uniform and i was not able to find any real clear pictures of his feet from the movie uh but i'm pretty sure he wears spurs given that it's a horse racing movie and these ones are pretty basic so i think they they work the best for the outfit. But so yeah, that is my Frank Hopkins outfit in its entirety. I think it turned out pretty good. Like I said, it's not 100% perfect because if if we could make the day shoot scarf red, it would be a lot better. And the hat is a little off, but I think it's close enough. If we could uh, if we could change the neckwear, I think it would be just about perfect. Uh, but he also wears a pretty it's a pretty standard looking uniform, so it's not like we're creating anything revolutionary here. But I think it looks pretty good and that's how you make the outfit. All right, then if we're trying to do I know that I don't normally do horses for these but since that uh, the horse is so central in this movie the movie's Hidalgo and I believe that's actually just the name of his horse either that or it's the name of the horse race but I can't remember but the horse is important and so in the movie I believe or in the story I believe Frank Hopkins rides a Spanish Mustang so if we just want to start off with uh options for the horse the red done overo Spa uh, Mustang is probably the best because it is actually a Mustang and it's got the approximate right colors. Uh, now, the one in the movie is a bit more white uh, than brown, so this one goes the wrong way with it, but it matches decently well, so that's one option for the horse. Another option would be the Crilio, or Criolo, I think is how you say that, Criolo, and the Sorrel Overo works decently well for that. It looks pretty much like it. Now, this one has a little bit too much white and not quite enough brown, but it looks similar. The Spotted Tricolor Norfolk Roadster looks decently well. Again, it matches... This one might match the pattern the best from the movie so far. Uh, it looks pretty dang decent. The face has a little bit too much brown and a little bit, you know, it should have more white. But the mashup on here looks pretty close to what it looks like in the movie. The skewballed gypsy cob looks almost perfect. Of course, the feet look a little bit different uh, and it's not very fast, so it wouldn't be very good for a horse race like this. But the coat of it looks very, very much like the one from the movie. And of course, the overall American paint also looks pretty dang decent. So any of those ho horse options that I just showed you all work decent well for imitating the horse from the movie. Like I said, I think the horse that Frank Hopkins rode was a Mustang, so the Mustang's probably the most accurate. But like I said, if you're trying to match the exact coat from the movie, I've showed you the best options and you can choose for yourself. So that's where we're going to end the movie. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it uh, entertaining or useful if you really wanted to dress up like Frank Hopkins. If you're one of those people out there who really, really like the movie Hidalgo, I finally made it. So this, like I said, this was a fan-requested video. So if you've got any requests for maybe a favorite outfit you've got from a Western that you just haven't been able to figure out, or something that you just think would be really cool, definitely leave that down in the comment section. Obviously, I do fan requests whenever I can. Uh, I always look at them, and I'll usually try to make them. I can't guarantee that I'll make every single one of them, because sometimes they just don't turn out. Or sometimes, like, I'll make it and I'll be like, yeah, that, that doesn't look all that special. <laughs> you know, whatever whatever it may be. Uh, there are reasons why the video may not get made, but I can guarantee I'll always at the very least take a look at them. Uh, so if you've got any comments, questions, concerns, recommendations, suggestions, all that sort of stuff, leave it down in the comment section below and I will take a look at it. If you like this video, please click that like button to show me that it was definitely something that you enjoyed and maybe something that you'd like to see more of. It's great to, you know, help me curate my content and it obviously helps me out in the algorithm. And lastly, if you like my content and haven't already subscribed to the channel, I definitely invite you to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can stay up to date on everything I upload on a daily basis. It, uh, it's a great, great way for you to see content you like and a great way to help out my channel. So it's a win-win all the way around. But with all that in mind, thanks a ton for watching. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it all the way to the end. But we'll see you next time.
Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.